Welcome back. If you recall last time, I was going to prove the identity that if a is a factor of n, then f of a is actually a factor of the nth Fibonacci number. I think that's amazing. And actually, I have a formula for the quotient, and even worse, or even better, depending on your point of view, there's actually a formula for the remainder, if there's remainders involved to begin with. So here it is. Here's the general formula that the nth Fibonacci number is the eighth Fibonacci number times something, there's the quotient, plus possibly a remainder. Um, it's convenient to set f of 0 to be 0, so if, if n is a multiple of a with plus 0, then this term vanishes, and I've got the result that f of a is indeed a factor of f of n. All right, so what I'd like to do is prove this via path walking, and this, and this proof is actually surprisingly easy. It's just the mathematical notation is actually harder than the actual proof. Here goes. So let's look at n dots, one dot at the, from dot 1 to dot n. And we're going to focus on the multiples of a. All right, first of all, let's look at all the paths. Well, there's, there's a Fibonacci number, there's fn paths that go from the, from the dot 1 to the nth dot. Let's look at all the paths that actually go through the eighth dot as well. Well, I'm going to go from the 1th dot to the 8th dot. There's a Fibonacci number of paths that do that. And to go from the 8th dot all the way up to the nth dot, there's actually n plus 1 minus a, that number of Fibonacci. There's a Fibonacci number of paths that go from here to here. Because we know that go for any t between any two dots in path walking, there's a Fibonacci number of paths that do it. So there it is. There are this number, this many paths, f of a times f of n plus 1 minus a, da, 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 paths that go through the 8th dot. Now let's look at the paths that don't go through the 8th dot, but maybe go through the 2 8th dot instead. Well, to avoid the 8th dot, I must go to the a minus 1th across to the a plus 1th dot. Well, there's f. There's a Fibonacci number of paths that go on this first segment. There's a Fibonacci number of paths that go to this segment from here to the 2 8th dot. And there's a Fibonacci number of paths that go from the 2 8th dot to the end. So again, I get a formula for the number of paths that behave that way. Let's keep going. Let's look at all the paths that don't go through the 8th, don't go through the 2 8th, but do go through the 3 8th dot. Again, in the first segment, there must be Fibonacci paths that do that. There must be Fibonacci number of paths in the second segment, Fibonacci number of paths in the third segment, Fibonacci number of paths in the, in the final segment. Again, I can actually count the number of paths that do that. And all the way up through all the multiples of A. And if that doesn't end, there's a remainder, I'm going to look at all the ones that uh, avoid, that even avoid the eighth, the two eighth, or avoid the Q eighth as well, and, and just avoid all the multiples of A. That's the final section of paths. Well, then again, same trick. First section has a Fibonacci number of paths, Fibonacci number of paths, Fibonacci number of paths, all the way up. And finally, the last segment has a Fibonacci number of paths. And I just kept track of my notation to count how many dots are there in these segments. And there's a formula for the number of paths that don't go through any multiple of A for the dots. Well, that accounts for all possible paths. So I've got all these formulas for all the possible situations. And basically, the total number of paths, Fn, must be the sum of all these formulas. What's well, nice if you notice that all these formulas have f oops, excuse me. All these formulas have FA in them, except for the final one, which is if there's uh, some remainder stuff going on. So what I have here that the total number of paths, Fn, is actually a multiple of FA, blech, there's the quotient, and if there's a remainder going on, that's what the remainder shall be. There it is, just counting paths. I love it. The formula is worse than the proof. But there it is. Alright. So the challenge now is to play this game. I mean, hours and hours of fun here. Just take any of your favorite Fibonacci numbers and see if you can prove it via path walking. And this is really, I love this in particular. I love seeing visual ways of, of establishing results. The paths are so accessible, so playful, so fun. Anyone can do it. Everyone can actually find, have fun ways of seeing results. I love seeing results as true rather than just grinding through algebra and arithmetic. All right, so there's some, some, some other Fibonacci identities I've just pulled out of the air. Can these be proved via path walking? Go for it, is what I say. Let me know if you want to email me if, if you come up with something clever and interesting. All right, let me go a little bit further. Oops. Um, by the way, you can probably guess that you've come to this website. All this material does appear on this website. But, uh, but uh, there's a natural question for further research. I shared some of these results with a whole bunch of high school kids in the fall of 2011. And of course, kids being kids naturally want to know what happens with three-layered honeycombs. And they started counting paths from starts to ends. Um, actually, there's two different types of starting points. You're going to start on a, on a top or bottom row. And if you count paths, you get various counts that look like this. Or if you start in the middle row, you get counts of paths that look like this. Uh, each horizontal segment row corresponds to a sequence which they gave these funny names. But they notice the same sequence, 1, 4, 15, 56, actually appears three times in this diagram. Kids wondered why and could explain why. 
In fact, the kids really analyzed these sequences and came up with astounding results. Uh, they found all sorts of interrelations between these sequences, which they could prove. Um, just a silly one is like, for example, if we look at this top row, 2 plus 1 is 3. 6 plus 5 is 11. 21 plus 20 is 41. So it looks like an plus cn is always dn. And there's a myriad of all sorts of results like that, which can be played with and all established via properties of how paths work. What's more exciting, uh, there is actually a very explicit formula for the Fibonacci numbers, Binet's formula, but these kids also came up with very explicit formulas for each of these sequences. You can actually write down a formula for what the nth one is going to be. Not recursive, very explicit. And more exciting to me is that they actually came up with very exciting, curious, curious and uh, geometric and combinatorial interpretations of these sequences. And just to be a teaser, um, here's, here's a hint of some of their results. For example, they looked at paths that maybe start in the middle row and end on the middle row. Well, any such path can actually be thought of as a partition in a strange way. Like we had partitions for the Fibonacci numbers. There's actually partitions with three different types of one. Maybe you can do a lower type of one between terms, or a straight one between terms, or an upper type of one. Or you can do, if you want to go, say, two, if you look at the middle row, two steps across, you can do like an upper two or a lower two. So actually, every path along the middle row corresponds to partition of a number n into three different types of ones or two different types of any other number. They also found a very strange tiling property. Suppose I want to tile a grid that's uh, three rows by some even number of columns, and I want to tile it with dominoes. So here's a tiling of a three by two n grid with dominoes. Well, they found that actually every tiling corresponds to a path, and every path corresponds to a tiling. So actually, they found this middle sequence, dn, counts the number of tilings in the three by even number uh, grid. And there's a hint of what that proof looks like. They can actually see that, um, the, the, that the sections of paths do correspond to sections of tiling, and vice versa. Uh, other rows actually give similar sorts of results. For example, if I want to do a 3 by odd number of columns, well, I can't tile that with dominoes and odd number of squares, but if you excise one of the cells, it turns out that actually is what, what the other sequences count. How many ways to count a 3 by odd grids with one cell excised? So it's fabulous stuff. I'm going to leave this as a teaser because this work is going to appear in a focus article in the summer of 2012 and um, maybe another place later on. Um, so I'll leave you to look at that then to just uh, glory in the marvels of what young kids can do. All right, thanks very much. Have fun with this. Really go for, for playing with Fibonacci numbers. And I guess the next thing is what about four road honeycombs, five road honeycombs, and road honeycombs? Can you find the general over theory about how everything works with uh, generalized Fibonacci numbers in this way? Months of fun to be had. Thank you.